Hi, it's Culinary Creations. Today we're making homemade guacamole and delicious roasted poblano cream sauce. Both of these recipes are sure to delight the taste buds of your friends and family. As we move along, I'll give you tips to easy preparation and fast cleanup. In addition, I'll share what some of my most favorite tools are in the kitchen. Let's get started. To start off, we're gonna be making the roasted poblano cream sauce. One of my first tips in the kitchen is to cover your sheet pan with foil. I love foil as it's so versatile and has so many different uses. You can see next I'm adding a little bit of olive oil to the sheet pan. If you don't have olive oil, you can use Pam or some type of kitchen spray. Next I'm putting my poblano peppers on the sheet pan. This recipe calls for eight poblano peppers, so I'll be putting in four different sheet pans. I'm adding just a little bit of olive oil to the top. If you don't have olive oil, you can wet your peppers as that will allow your salt and pepper to stick to it. Be careful with the salt and pepper. This is something that I'd almost leave out if you're not sure how your family likes salt and pepper in the fact that a little bit goes a long way. Then you're going to cook at 350 degrees for 35 minutes. You can see having them come out, they look amazing. Next, we're going to peel our peppers. I find that it really depends on what I'm planning on using the poblano peppers for as to how careful I need to be in getting the skin off and whether or not I leave the peppers intact. If I plan to stuff the peppers and want a prettier presentation, then I'm more likely to put them in a bag and be more cautious. For this recipe, since they're going into the blender, my main goal is just getting the skin off and I'm not as concerned with whether or not the pepper is not as intact when I'm completed. Now I'm going to roast my garlic. Check out my Amazon link and I'll put up some of my favorite tools for removing garlic skin. For this, I'm using foil. I'm drizzling a little bit of olive oil, and then I'm just going to put my garlic cloves in the foil, fold it up like a sandwich, and put it in the oven for 35 minutes at 350 degrees. You can also put it on the sheet pan when you're doing your peppers if you like. This recipe calls for eight poblano peppers, four cloves of garlic, and half a cup of sour cream. Check out my Amazon link as well as my other videos if you are interested in this Brevel food processor. It has changed my life in the kitchen and it's definitely one of my favorite appliances. It does so many things and cleanup is an absolute breeze. You can see now we finished our poblano pepper sauce. It is delicious and creamy and wows all of my guests. Now we're going to go ahead and make our guacamole. I find guacamole is so versatile. The guacamole my family likes is creamy guacamole, which has cream cheese. I find this is something that I grew up on, and many times when I go out to restaurants, they do not add the cream cheese. If you haven't had it this way, I would encourage you to try it. You can see I am just peeling my avocados. You want to be careful in getting that pit out, and then watching for any black spots as you're peeling your avocados. Avocados, as you're in the grocery store, you want to just fill them. And sometimes I find that it's actually easier to get an avocado that is a little bit harder than one that is completely soft. Usually within a day or two, they will soften up. And then you don't run the risk that you've gotten a, an avocado that may already be bad when you get home. You can see these avocados look phenomenal. And, I've, and I have put them all in a dish. This recipe calls for six to eight avocados, depending on how big they are. Once I get them into a dish, I'm then going to begin prepping my other items. It calls for two tomatoes, two limes, one block of cream cheese, and then I like to use Tabasco sauce as well as salt to taste. You can see I have a lime squeezer. Again, I'll put this in the Amazon link. This is really uh, the only way to get juice out of a lime. It is uh, also versatile and you can use it for a lemon, but so much better than just squeezing it by hand as I find that I get so much more juice out than if I had squeezed it by hand. I like lime, however, some people like lemon. You can really use either one. I would encourage you to try 
this recipe with lime or lemon. I actually grew up with my mom using lemon and as I uh, became an adult I found that I liked the taste of lime a little bit better. Either one is completely fine and you can actually use whichever one your grocery store has on, on sale. I like to do the juice of two limes or lemons as I find that that acidic taste helps mix with the guacamole. Next we're going to go ahead and just add a little uh, bit of salt and cilantro. These I really encourage you just to do to taste as everyone has a different taste and depending on your family you might like a little bit more cilantro. You might be like someone who doesn't like cilantro at all and you might be someone who doesn't like a lot of salt. So when they say taste your food, it is so important. I'm continually tasting to see what I like. Here I'm adding the diced red onions. You can see I have diced these very, very small. For this guacamole recipe, I like to have fairly finely diced onions. I find that helps when uh, combined with the creamy texture of the guacamole. If I'm making one that doesn't have the cream cheese in it, I might be more inclined to leave it a little bit more bulky. Now I'm going to slice my tomatoes. I like to slice these fairly fine. If you are a person that doesn't like tomatoes, you can leave them out. My husband doesn't like tomatoes, but he also doesn't like guacamole, so I go ahead and put them in. Likewise, if you don't have uh, tomatoes in stock at your local grocery store or they're out of season, you can use some salsa from the refrigerator. I find that often salsa changes the taste of the guacamole, so I prefer to use fresh tomatoes when I can find, find them at the local store. You can see one of my tips to clean up is to use a piece of foil. I put that down because of the fact that there's so much uh, debris that you're taking off with the limes the onions and the avocados and I can just wrap that up and throw away the packet of foil when I'm done and it helps with cleanup. Now I'm going to put all of this into the KitchenAid mixer. People often want to know which KitchenAid I like. I like the Professional 6 quart. Tell me in the comments which ones you like. I'll link the one that I like below. I find that when I'm making bread it is a great choice. Next, I'm going to go ahead and blend this to a creamy texture. You can leave it chunky if you wish. And then finally, I'm going to add the Tabasco sauce to taste. This will allow you to add it and make it spicy if your family likes spicy or not, and you can leave it completely out. Finally, we're going to add these to chicken tacos. I have a great video that you'll want to make, be sure to check out that uses the Brevel food processor to make chicken tacos and prep the ingredients. You can see there I am putting on cabbage and carrots and these tacos are awesome. I'm going to go ahead and add our poblano pepper sauce as well as the guacamole and both of these made these chicken tacos an absolute delight. They were like going to a restaurant and having restaurant quality tacos. The final thing that I'm going to do is just add a little bit of cheese. You can use a white cheese, a cheddar cheese. In this case, after I've added both of these sauces, I wanted to use a cheddar cheese. So I put a little bit of cheddar cheese on, adding a little bit of salsa, and it's set to go. This is a quick and easy recipe that you can make at home for your friends and family. If you like this video, please remember to like and subscribe.